page 23, chapter 2, Dr. Neil Kanthrai D. Chhatrapati and his contributions to blind welfare. Blindness at any age affects adversely the victim. In the case of adventitiously blinded persons, the effects are even worse. It means the virtual end of their socially active and economically productive life. However, some persons have shown extraordinary courage to face the situation. They succeeded in finding alternative ways to engage themselves in socially acceptable and economically rewarding activities. Neil Kanthrai Dadabhai Chhatrapati was one such rare person. In fact, he went a step further. He helped the blind. His contribution to the education of blind children is immense. He also formulated principles for the universalization of the Braille Code, which turned out to be extremely valuable to his country. Chhatrapati was born in 1854. He was sent to Baroda for early education. Later on, he was shifted to Ahmedabad. He did his matriculation from the Mission High School there. He then joined the Grant Medical College and completed his LM and S. He started his own clinic after completing his medical education. He showed promise from the beginning as a private doctor. Impressed by his performance, he was asked in 1879 to start a small dispensary by Bahadur Ranchurlal Chotalal CIE, page 24. He therefore set up a dispensary near the railway station at Deriapur area. It soon became very popular. The success and popularity of the venture attracted the attention of bureaucracy. Consequently, grants began to from the government. Later on, the dispensary blossomed into a hospital called Ranchor Hospital. This naturally enhanced Chhatrapati's prestige as a physician and surgeon. Para. Chhatrapati joined the local civil hospital afterwards as an assistant surgeon. He soon became very popular among students because of his devotion and congenial disposition. He was considered specially good at teaching anatomy and physiology. Dr. John Robb, civil surgeon at the hospital, was his boss at the time. He too became his admirer. This acquaintance proved very useful later on for him. Para, Chhatrapati was an articulate writer. He contributed articles regularly to a medical journal named The Lancet. Aware of the need for scientific and medical literature in Indian languages, he wrote a number of small books in Gujarati for the benefit of common people. One of his books was entitled Stri Mitra, within brackets, Friend of Women. It dealt with the do's and don'ts during menstruation and pregnancy. His other books were Arogyata Namul Tatavo, Ghargatu Raisana, and Madani Mavajat. Para. While playing tennis at a club with his friends in 1892, he was observed committing mistakes which were not expected from a tennis player of his caliber. It was in fact an indication of some eye ailment. Worried by this development, he visited Bombay for an examination of his eyes by an ophthalmologist. He prescribed spectacles, but they proved inadequate. Page 25. His sight began to deteriorate rapidly. He was compelled to leave his government job and say goodbye to many of his activities, including writing articles. Subsequently, his medical reports revealed 
that he was suffering from an incurable disease of the eyes called atrophy of the optic nerves. Para. It must have been a hard blow to him, but he was not to remain paralyzed for a long time like many others. He approached the editor of The Lancet for consultation. He gave him some literature on the blind. It encouraged him for an active life. John Robb also sent him literature which helped him to reconcile with his blindness. He wrote him encouraging letters which were of immense value in terms of counselling. He also gave him the address of National Institute for the Blind, within brackets capital NIB, London, which sent to him Braille alphabets and pamphlets on the Braille script. He took full advantage of this help and soon learned to read the tactile system. Consequently, he ordered more books in Braille and Braille journals like Progress, which informed him about the work being done for the blind in the UK and other countries. Para, aware of the adverse effects of inactivity and idleness, he was determined to lead an active and fruitful life, to keep himself abreast of what was happening around him and to scan the literature of his choice he engaged a sighted person to read out printed material to him. Soon, he was able to contribute some articles to the Gujarati press. He used the same person as a guide for attending various social gatherings. This filled his time and saved him from a gnawing sense of worthlessness. Para, having adjusted himself to his visual disability, Chhatrapati thought of helping the blind in a constructive manner. Page 26. He was educated in the liberal tradition and was therefore aware of the benefits and importance of education. He thought of an educational facility for the blind, but he required funds for this venture. So he sought an interview with the then ruler of Baroda, Sayaji Rao Gaikwar, he was not able to impress him. Perhaps his idea of opening an educational facility for the blind was too drastic a step for him. However, he awarded a grant of rupees 300 to, within brackets, enable him to get all the information about what was being done for the blind in India and other countries. Para. It was probably this grant that encouraged him to pay a visit to Amritsar for obtaining first-hand knowledge about the methods of teaching at the Sharp School. On returning from Amritsar, he set up a school at his own residence in Ahmedabad in 1895-96. to Open brackets. In some documents, like the Manual of Bharati Braille, published by the NIVH, the year of establishment of this school is stated to be 1895, while according to an article by B.B. Kampani in Visually Handicapped in India, edited by R.M. Haldar, the year was 1896. Close brackets. The first pupils to join his school were from the Mahipatram Rupram orphanage of the town. It is a coincidence that the first group of students at the school launched by Hue at Paris in 1784 also came from an orphanage. Para. In about two years, the number of pupils started increasing. Chhatrapati, therefore, required more space. He approached the Gujarat Vernacular Society and succeeded in getting its permission to run the school at its premises in Bhadar. He also managed to get some financial assistance from the Ahmedabad municipality. Public donations, too, started flowing in. The school consequently progressed. It was a day facility and not a residential school, as was the case with other 
similar facilities in India during the pre-independence era. Page 27. It's another important feature was that it opened its doors to girls also. By 1901, it had about 20 pupils, including four girls. In later years, Chhatrapati headed a residential school for a long time where he had adequate financial resources at his disposal. Para. The committee set up to manage the Victoria Memorial Fund decided to establish a school for the sightless in 1902. It invited Chhatrapati to take advantage of his rich experience in the field and asked him to launch a school for blind children at Bombay. Initially, he had some reservations but eventually agreed. He moved to Bombay that year along with his male pupils since the proposed school was meant for boys only. Thus the city of Bombay witnessed the establishment of an educational institution for the blind which was named Victoria Memorial School for the Blind. It was first accommodated in a rented building at Belasis Road and later transferred to Tardeo when sufficient funds were available. Para. Unfortunately, after finishing the course at the school, most of the students had no opportunity to earn a decent living. Only some students with the background of music were able to learn their living independently. Others had to go home. Some were compelled to take to begging also. Chhatrapati, therefore, was eager to help them. He succeeded in establishing an industrial home for the blind at Lamington Road in 1916. This workshop provided an opportunity to the blind workers to earn their bread with their toil. Para. The year 1916 witnessed yet another development. The government of Bombay, at the insistence of the government of India, set up a committee for the inquiry of defectives. Chhatrapati was included in the committee at one of its members. Page 28. He pleaded with the committee to establish four schools for the blind, one each at Karachi, Bhavnagar, Dharwar and Pune, in the presidency of Bombay. It agreed. It also recognized the Braille code developed by him. Para. In 1918, an ICS officer with sufficient interest in blind welfare met Chhatrapati at his school and discussed with him his plans for the blind welfare. Subsequently, a meeting of some leading citizens of Bombay took place the following year and an organization named Blind Relief Association was established. It was aimed at functioning as an umbrella organization with broader mandate of work encompassing more than one area. Para, following the receipt of a bequeathed by nursing S. Dharmaji in 1927, it took over the industrial home for the blind started by Chhatrapati and renamed it as NSD, Industrial Home for the Blind which was now provided with a kitchen also. The Blind Relief Association took over the administration of the Happy Home and School for the Blind as well as the other school for the blind at Bombay and some more facilities at other places were provided. Para. Chhatrapati knew English and coincidentally his first exposure to Braille was through English only. He worked hard to adapt Braille script to the Indian vernaculars. According to B. B. Kampani, open inverted commas, he thought it very necessary to prepare an adaptation of English Braille that would suit most of these vernaculars. He therefore, with the help and cooperation of eminent educationists of Ahmedabad, 
late Rao Saheb Madhavlal Harilal Desai, Principal Prem Chand Rai Chand Training College for Teachers at Ahmedabad, late Harilal Kahandas, retired headmaster, and his own brother Hari Prasad Dayabhai Chhatrapati, considered for months together the question of adapting English Braille to the vernaculars, and they, after full consideration, devised an adaptation of English Braille to the vernaculars, which is known as Dr. Nilkanthrai's Braille. Para. This Braille code was based on having similar Braille signs for similar or nearly similar sounds in English and Indian vernaculars. His code is referred to in the literature on Braille in India as the Indian Braille. Its importance lies in the fact that the conference on the World Braille at Paris in 1950 accepted to some extent its principles. Para. Chhatrapati played an excellent innings in the development of educational and rehabilitation services for the blind in this country. His contribution to Braille development is of particular interest to the students of education of the blind. In view of this dedication services in general and in recognition of his devoted work for over two decades at the Victoria Memorial School for the Blind in particular, it would be appropriate to rename that school after him. Para Chhatrapati developed some ailment during 1921. He died on 11 September 1922 at Ahmedabad.